Lancet reported that there were uh, clusters of mysterious infant mortality in 20 regions of Europe. And this is after the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia with uranium. And, um, and they said the same things. It's because the parents are smoking. It's because the children are, the babies are sleeping with the parents. It's because of this and that, but always blaming the parents. And what a tragedy to, um, to conceal their complicity in a global genocide by blaming it on the parents, but that's the spin that the nuclear industry consistently follows, and um, it's always attacking the victims. But of course, the rule about victimization is that the perpetrator always turns himself into the victim. So um, now we do not have data for infant mortality increases in Japan. And that will probably be very difficult to get because the United States government is actually running the response in Japan through the Department of Energy and they will not want that information to get out. And that's why Dr. Sherman was so viciously attacked. Uh, they don't want the U.S. government and the Department of Energy and British Petroleum and the, uh, the monarchs of, of Britain and Holland and the international financiers do not want people to understand that they are being targeted with a global, um, a global um, genocidal war. So, uh, but, so let me get this right, and I, and I really want to express it. If we go to the top of this pyramid of targeting, at the top of the pyramid, by your research, is the British crown, the the orange crown, that is the crown of the Netherlands, Royal Shell Dutch, and you know, all of that, and uh, certain other Zionist financial bloodlines. Is is that it? Yes, that's correct. Right, and and, and, and the, the Rockefellers. And there and are the people like yes. David Rockefeller in yes. that constellation. Yes. And those have adopted, and we can go back yes. over 100 years, Yes. they've adopted eugenic depopulation yes. programs. Yes. And so now they're putting them into effect yes. to, bring, to exterminate. I've heard that they want to bring the population down to to 500 million from the almost 7 billion that they are now. Well, uh, what uh, Prince Philip and other uh, actors in this global um, agenda to depopulate the world, they've said that they want to bring it down to 1 billion in the next two generations. That's uh, where are we going to bury 5 billion people? Yeah, so... They probably are looking at it in the same way that they look at their rare racehorses and their cattle, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, uh, one can imagine then the plans that they have for their hereditary offspring, such as Prince William. Correct. Yeah. I I know that's a little off, but I just want to ha I just want to make the point of associating these royal crowns and the Rockefeller, the British crown, the Netherlands crown, the Zionist Rothschild, City of London, evidentially, forensically speaking, with this genocide. Well, uh, I don't, you know, Prince William and um, his new wife, Kate, um, they've actually been living together for 16 years. They were put together in a house at their university when they were 16 year old, 16 or 17 years old. And they've been together ever since. And they were not allowed to marry until the uh, end of April in uh, just a few months ago in 2011. And that uh, coincided with the 25th anniversary of Chernobyl. This is worse than Chernobyl. This is much worse than Chernobyl. And this happened just a month and a half before they were married. So um, if they had 16 years to choose a wedding date, 
I think that uh, the, co- in, the, the, co- the coinciding of their wedding date with uh, Fukushima disaster and the anniversary of Chernobyl cannot be a mistake or an accident or anything but deliberate. Plus, also, during the actual royal wedding of the heir to this British uh, genocidal British crown, uh, uh, there were harp-caused tornadoes throughout the south from the southeast to the southwest of the U.S., as you pointed out, with, with rain, with radioactivity from Fukushima being brought across the Pacific yes. Yes. by weather warfare of harp and raining down. So that was the wedding gift of the House of Windsor to the people of the United States. It, is that, am I exaggerating or is this like true? Well, I think that um, I think that the wedding of Kate and Prince William symbolizes that um, in the time when they will be on the throne, the effects of the Fukushima disaster will be very, very, very obvious. And um, that's, about, that's about two generations, probably. So in two generations, they will be ruling over a very, very different global population. It will be much smaller. Not no. to mention the permanent genetic damage to all future generations. It's horrific. It's so unbelievable. It's so Orwellian. It's so horrific that it's, um, it's amazing for me to even do the research on it. It's so shocking. Right, right. I, I didn't want to get you off track, but at the same time, for our viewers, I wanted to really cement that fact of who's at the top of the pyramid leading forward this genocide initially of babies and children and then of all humankind. And I'd just like to mention that this is nothing new. Uh, Malthus, in the 1700s, he was a British uh, intellectual, he uh, proposed that the world population uh, was a tremendous threat in the future. Well, there was no overpopulation then, so where did he get that idea? There was nothing that justified it. And um, that was picked up and expanded by Darwin and Aldous Huxley, who were the originators of the modern eugenics movement and uh, theory or hypothesis or whatever you want to call it. And it was the Rockefellers in the 1920s who brought eugenics from uh, the Rhodes Roundtable in England to the United States. So this has been an ongoing situation. Um, The British uh, uh, practiced... um, eugenics in Canada before the Americans ever did, and uh, they gave smallpox contaminated blankets to the First Nation people in Canada in the uh, Acadia area. So um, uh, all this eugenics and depopulation and genocide is really originating in Britain. And the Dutch were not innocent either. They had colonies. They practiced that too. And um, the, the Dutch East India Company, the East India Company, the Hudson Bay Company, they are all part of this uh, British global depopulation for land grabs and, and mineral resources, as well as spices. That was what the East Indias were so uh, attractive for. But let's go back to Japan right. and, and uh, look at Uh, evidence that indicates the infant mortality is going to increase in Japan also. Um, There's a video clip on YouTube, and it's uh, an albino uh, baby bunny, bunny rabbit, that was born on May 7th without ears, and it's an albino, and it was right outside of the 18-mile exclusion zone that was evacuated. Now, since May 21st, um, there have been 
323,705 views of that video. And what is happening is that other animal mutations have also been uh, reported now increased in uh, Fukushima Prefecture. And the woman who owns the farm where this rabbit was born said in 10 years of raising animals here, we have never had a mutation and certainly never a mutation like this in any of our rabbits. And um, she said, we do not use local or consume local feed or food. Now we bring it all in from outside of the Fukushima area. So we're going to see a big increase in, um, in infant mortality. There's no doubt about that at all. But it will be hard to uh, get the documentation from Japan. So any questions? I uh, well, I'm I'm just um, uh, you know, n now that we're on uh, J Japan, I think that uh, as you can begin to expose the Japanese government complicity in the ongoing genocide of Japanese babies and children, that will be somewhat mirrored by what appears to be the Canadian and the U.S. government complicity in yes. the genocide of U.S. babies and children and Canadian babies and children. So maybe we should go on, get, get into the Japanese government complicity in this baby and child genocide, which is sort of the first wave of the genocide we can expect. Well, um, the foreign minister of the interior, um, let's see what his name is, hold on, um, his name is Nishio Masamachi. He is a radiation treatment specialist at the Hokkaido Cancer Center, but he was also a member of the Japanese government under uh, Prime Minister um, Hatari, I think, anyway, the Hatama the last one, and he said he blames uh, much of this disaster on, quote, nuclear industry lobbyists and academic flunkies. He calls them Goyo Gakusha of the government who built up the myth of nuclear safety in the first place, and that certainly is true. Uh, because it's true in the United States, France, everywhere in all countries with nuclear power plants. It's always been the academics who sold this to the government, to the public, and, um, uh, and they're really responsible for this. Now, um, the Prime Minister, Nato Khan, um, his attitude and his message to the Japanese people is eat it and be patriotic about the food in the Fukushima uh, prefecture and other parts of Japan that is very contaminated with this Fukushima radiation. And he was speaking at a news conference um, to mark one month, so that would have been in the middle of April, since the massive earthquake and tsunami devastated the northeastern coast of the country. And Japanese Prime Minister Khan said produce from the region around the Fukushima plant is safe to eat despite radiation leaks. There's the spin again. Uh, and this is translated uh, from his speech. Quote, from now on, people should not fall into an extreme self-restraint mood and they should live life as normal to consume products from the areas that have been affected is also a way in which to support the area. We should enjoy the use of such products and support the areas that have been affected. I ask you to do this and with the Japanese culture um, they obey authority blindly. They obey academics. They obey government officials. 